Hello everyone. Just waiting for some people to come on. Let's see. Looks like a couple people are coming on. Just trying to give y'all some time. Hey, hey. Hey, Jamie. Mm -mm, mm -mm. Let's see. Again, I never know who's read this and who hasn't, so it's hard to be able to invite people. Uh, Kim, I know re read that. Anna. Just trying to invite a few people. It's always hard because I don't know who's who's watching and who's not. Mm -mm. let's see welcome if you guys are popping on i'm just trying to invite some people on here real quick so don't mind me bum, 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 bum. i don't know if tobin read it or not how are you guys doing today? Bum, bum, bum. I think there was a gang of people that were on that chat and I can't figure out who it was. Shoshana, hi. Alicia, I see you on here. What up, cuz? If you just hopped on, feel free to say hello. And we'll get started in just a second. You know, we'll be talking our March book, My Sister the Serial Killer. Hi, Jen. I don't even want to pronounce the author's last name. Oyinkan Braithwaite, Brathwaite, Braithwaite, I don't know. Hey Kimberly, welcome. I always chop up these author's names, sound crazy. Hopefully this is as quick and easy of a read for you guys as it was for me. I did mine um, via audiobook. It was only like six hours long, so it I breezed through it. Bum bum. Okay. More people are popping on. Just trying to give them a couple more seconds to pop on, and then we can get started. Because we've got some good stuff to talk about. I don't know if Anna's on here. Um, we're going live back to back. The audio was pretty good. I liked it. It seemed like it went pretty quickly. Um, hi, Nicole. For it to be 200 pages, I wasn't expecting it to be that quick of a read. The audio was actually really good, though. Um, just because with when you have books that are based in other parts of the world, you get that the accent and the pronunciation of the name, so it, it helps with the different characters. There she is. All right. Anna has been such a great help to me. Um, as you guys know, I'm going live back to back. So after this, I'll be on Instagram going live at 9 p.m. Um, so Anna goes live with me on there. She was too chicken to come on this one tonight, but I'm gonna I'm gonna work on her to come on here for y'all too. I'm just kidding. But um, Anna has been a great help and 
she's helped me come up with some questions and some things to discuss. So I think we've got some really good content for you guys tonight. And oh, Essence made it. I wasn't sure if you're going to make the eight or nine. So that's awesome. Cool, cool. Okay. So overall, I just want to get your overall opinion of the book. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Was it just okay? What rating did you give? Go ahead and type that in the comments. I want to know what, what your thoughts were of the book. And I'm gathering my notes. Let's see. Go ahead and let me know your thoughts of the book and whether or not you loved it or hated it. Again, the book we're discussing is My Sister the Serial Killer, which was our March book of the month for Mystery Book Month. Y'all must be typing a essay up there with your thoughts. Uh-oh. Well, I'll start with myself. Really enjoyed this one. I think I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. Um, not really into thrillers, mystery books. So this was a little bit outside the box for me. Um, I typically like romance, historical, um, nonfiction, and historical fiction as well. So um, this genre was a little bit different for me, but I actually really enjoyed it. It was a quick read. It was comical, which helped, um, but it really sucked me in from beginning to end. So I was excited for that. Let's see. Anna said, fun read for sure. Fast paced, extremely fast paced. I really wasn't expecting that. Even though it's a tiny book, it's still 200 pages, um, but it, it really did breeze by. It was a good book. I liked it. Okay, I actually gave it four stars, wanted more though. So I gave it four and a half. It probably would have gotten a five from me had it not ended the way that it ended. I absolutely hated the ending. But other than that, I really, yeah, I think I gave it four on Goodreads. Um, but for me, it was it was like a four and a half, four, four and a half. I'd liked it, I'd say four. Four stars overall, two and a half for holes in the plot. Yeah, I, I felt the same way. Um, especially with the ending, but we'll get to that question. So haven't gotten to read it yet. I'm working on it. It's pretty good. It's a quick read too. Um, it won't take you long to get through it, but if you don't like spoilers, you should probably pop off cause, <laughs> cause it's going to be full of them, but it was really good. Um, so of all the characters that were in the book, who was your favorite character and why? I think for me, it was Corriday. Um, yeah, slip out. And then next month, I'll talk about this again, but we'll be reading Queenie. Um, and I'm actually, well, we'll have two books, Queenie and then um, Black Girls Must Die Exhausted. I'm actually going to have Jane Allen, the author, come on for that. So if you can read either one of those books, we'll be chatting about them next month. But we'll see you later. And I'll talk about more, that more at the end. Yes, much holes in the plot. Yep. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think I liked Corday the most of all the characters that were in there. Um, simply because she just had like this sense of humor. Sometimes it was extremely dry, but in certain instances, um, she added to the story with her commentary, which I felt was awesome. Anna says she's team no one. Yeah. I don't know. I, I think, did you have a favorite character though? I think for me, it was Corday because everybody else got on my everlasting nerve. Yeah, both sisters were annoying. Um, Ayula was especially annoying for me. Corday was a little lesser, but... I had my issues with her too. If I had to pick a team between, well, let's see. If you had to pick a team between the sisters, absolutely had to. Who are you? Who are you rocking with, Corday or Ayula? Yes, very annoying. Hi, Allison. Welcome. Yeah, I felt like 
They were both annoying. I felt like Corday was such a pushover. Um, I only felt like Corday was bitter towards the end when her man was being stolen away. Her man. Um, I didn't feel like she was that way the whole time. I don't know. But if she was bitter, she had right to be. I mean, you're constantly... Your sister is this entitled little princess who gets her way who everybody loves who everybody pretty much bows down to um and so you're sitting here watching your sister she's the prettier one she's your baby sister she gets all of the attention she gets all of the love from her parents and so if she was bitter I would certainly understand like she has reason to be to me mean and judgmental towards everyone Kimberly says she's team Corday. I yeah, that would be my team if I had to pick one. Yeah, she was mean towards her coworkers, but I mean, the receptionist or whoever that she worked with most of the time, like she was kind of bitchy if I'm being honest with her. So like who wouldn't be crabby towards you know, and then the other people that she was dealing with, like the other dude was trying to get his Mac on with one of the nurses or whatever. So it was like nobody was ever doing what they were supposed to do. So I don't know. I kind of, yeah, Corday. See, yeah, if I had to pick between the two, I just, I can't do the whole spoiled brat, brat entitled, like, I can't. So if I had to pick one, Corday definitely would be the one that I was rocking with. Um, so let's talk a little bit about Corday and Ayula. Um, obviously we know Ayula is the serial killer and she continually kills all of her boyfriends. Um, let's see. Hang on. Searching through my, my list of questions here. So do you feel that Corday feels guilty for the part? Well, let, let me come back to that question. Hang on. Does covering up for her sister's murders, so to, for this is Corday, for covering up for her sister's, um, does that make her just as guilty as Ayula for covering up the murders? And why do you guys think that she did cover up those murders for her sister? Let's see, Jamie said, and you can't tell her that she's batshit crazy killer and you have to clean up the mess all the time. Yeah, that, yeah, exactly. I'd have a little bit of issue with that. She had options. I can see where a little resentment would come in. Absolutely. I think, I think, I think Corday really held it together as far as her resentment. Like, she had her moments, but it really didn't, like spill out for me until her sister started to catch the attention of some, like until it directly affected her and the person that, you know, she was secretly in love with, you know, she tried to keep her sister away from her job and all of her people. Cause she just wanted like her workspace was her own little space to be her and be this fabulous person. So, you know, her sister's always getting the attention in their home from her, her mother, um, you know, everywhere that they went together like her sister was always the 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 one that was getting all the attention so I know I understand why Corday didn't want her to come to work and stuff like that so I don't think that that resentment to me I mean yes she cleaned up her messes and the murders and stuff like that but I really don't feel like it came out until her sister grabbed the attention of the doctor but her co-workers were not nice also. See, that's the same thing I said as Allison. Like, she was mean to her co-workers, but, I mean, the receptionist, she was kind of a bitch. Like, and they were lazy. They didn't do anything. So it's like they left everything to Corday. So I'm, Allison, I'm totally with you on that one. I feel like they they totally just were, were rude to her as well. Daddy issues for sure. So, yep, absolutely guilty. Hi, Talitha. Yes, definitely an accessory to murder out of guilt. Just as guilty, but I think she knew where it was coming from and justified it to herself. Um, so Anna and I came up with the question, do you think that that guilt was out of um, 
their father passing away and, and that missing piece. And also, um, do you think the father's death is the reason that Ayula became a serial killer? Like, was that the, the connection or the trigger that made her that way? Let me see. Just as guilty, but I think she knew where it was coming from and justified it to herself. But I do believe you will do anything for family, especially your sister. Yeah. She stole her spotlight at work. Yeah, that was that was mad funny to me. Um, Because she was so badly like telling her, don't come to my job, stay away from my coworkers. She wanted her to have no parts of her work. Like she wanted to keep that all to herself, the doctor to herself. Like she... That was her little, her space, her place to be her and nobody know about her sister and look down on her because of her sister. Let's see. Yes, she's guilty just as much. She helped her sister get rid of the dead boyfriend. That was crazy. Yeah. Because she was mean to her, to them. The abuse in general. Yes, yes, and yes, yes. Not the death itself, the whole thing. The history of the father, yes, could relate to the father's death. Death, yeah, I think the the father's behavior, um, and you know his death had a lot to do with Ayula and the way that she was acting. Um, why do we think that Ayula keeps killing her boyfriends though? Like she's on her third. Possibly. The doctor was going to be her fourth, right? Um, a big part of it for me, it was an escape for her. I think once these guys started to figure out who she was, um, her true character, it was her escape they started to figure out who she was and maybe start to piece the puzzle together and um i think that's why she kept killing them is i think and see i have to refresh my memory on that do they tell us who killed the father because i thought i thought it was them too or at least Corday, but I my brain is kind of fogged. So if y'all have any insight on who killed Stools used the father's behavior as an explanation, reason to continue to cover up for her sister. She doesn't know how to love or what love is from a man. Absolutely. <laughs> Laugh out loud, not stools, Ayula. <laughs> at Jamie, I thought that too. figured out who she was like that she was really batshit crazy towards the end of the relationship they started to learn her her ways um that she really is crazy they're on number five golly that's crazy see a lot of people it was corday just because of what she said kim says yeah i think they did it together i thought it was them yeah, I, my mind, I've read a couple of books since then, so my mind is kind of fogged on that in particular. It was someone in the house not sure if it wasn't the mom, it was one of the sisters. Now, that's another point that I want to bring up because the mom was very much about Ayula and the girls finding a man and basically like, life is nothing unless you capture yourself a great man, right? So do we think... That brings back a point when we talk about that it could have been the mom. Do we think that the mom knew about Ayula and her murdering? Because how do you just, how do your boyfriends just continue to go missing and the mom doesn't question it at all? So I think the mom knows, in my opinion, but just chose to kind of just, you know, bury it under the rug. What are your thoughts on that? It was the title of the last chapter five. You're right. I think both of them had something to do with the father being killed when he beat Ayula. They were plotting then. Yep. Number five, and I was like, what? Yeah, you're right. 
nah, the mom was trash. The mom was complete trash. She didn't protect her kids. Yeah, I think I absolutely think we she knew about that. Anna and I talked about that a little bit, but yeah, the mom was complete trash. Um, but she was so concerned with her just finding a good money, a, a good man and marrying into money, probably so that she could be taken care of too, that she just didn't give Jack diddly about what her daughter was doing. Yep. Completely swept it under the rug for sure. Why do you think that Corday doesn't stop Ayula from killing? She doesn't really intervene. She just kind of lets it happen and cleans up the mess. For me, she was kind of a pushover. She just let her little sister do whatever it is that she wanted. And there was no real consequence for Ayula. She just continued to, to live life, take advantage of people, and be this little princess. Um... Yeah, I took issue with that. Do, 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 do. And so let's talk about... Um, I feel like... Corday had a couple of instances. So I'm going back to the hospital and her sister coming. Yeah, she definitely was her sister's keeper um, and tried to protect her. Yeah, and just kind of let it happen. And she probably, I mean, the first time she probably thought it was a one-time thing and that it would never happen again, but then it just continued to, to be a pattern of Ayula's. And at one point when you help her to cover up one, you're just as guilty. So it's like, when two came, when three came, when four came, like you just have to continue helping her or else what are you gonna do, rat her out? Because you're just as guilty at this point. So it's like, you do that and you're 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 going down with her. I don't think she knew how to stop her. Yeah, I don't think anybody did. Especially when you're entitled and you're used to getting your way. I don't think that she ever just considered herself ever getting caught. She tried to take the knife, but Ayula was very manipulative. You're right, she did. Um, and it was the father's knife, right? I think because she couldn't protect her from her dad, she felt she owed her. Yeah, I feel I feel like there was a sense of guilt. So let's talk about Corday and her crush. I can't remember the doctor's name off the top of my head right now. But Ayula comes into the hospital, just pops in one day, and Corday's like, what are you doing here? The doctor, you know, Corday's crush takes notice of her sister, Tade, there you go, thank you. Tade um, takes notice of Ayula. Why don't we think that Corday spoke up um, at first? It took her a very long time until it was like literally almost too late and he was about to be the next victim um, is when she finally spoke up. But why, there was opportunities where Ayula even asked her like, "Do you are you feeling this dude? Do you have a crush on him? Like, what what's your deal? And she just, she never really spoke up. So, um, why do you think that she held in her feelings for Tade? A part of me almost, once he saw her sister, she maybe felt like she wasn't good enough for him. Or another thing that I wrote down in my notes is I felt like, I felt like because she knew the doctor, she knew how smart he was, that he would she was hoping that he would see through her see through Ayula and see that she pretty much is bringing nothing to the table besides looks and so you know knowing the conversations that she's had with Dr. Tade that she would eventually this is my feelings I just felt like she sat back because she would she thought that he would see right through her and that there was nothing more to her than her good looks she's intimidated by her sister's beauty for sure that's what I was going to say. She didn't think she was beautiful or worthy. She definitely had issues with her looks and not feeling pretty enough. But I, I also think that I, I, I think that she was hoping that he would see right through her sister. Yeah. Which he didn't. Which was disappointing because I was like, oh, maybe. But you know what? 
So a part of me thought this, this story could have went two ways. That the doctor would see through Ayula and start dating Corday, and then Ayula would kill Corday, or they would somehow get into it. Or what I thought was happening is if the doctor was going to continue to date Ayula and they had something on, that Corday was going to swoop in and either murder her sister or murder Dr. Tade. Like, I really thought there was going to be a plot twist where something happened. Um, it could have went one way or another. I think that would have actually made the story even better if, if it would have went one way or another. Yeah, I really thought, yeah, he was trash. I was like, Ugh. and then about the ring, it was just, it's like, dude, you went on like three dates with this girl and she's batshit crazy and you're, you're buying a ring like you're ready to pop the question. You're all in love. Like I just, I didn't understand it. I didn't understand it at all. And then even for me, even after that, like Corday went through all of this hurt and seeing her sister just kind of take on her crush and whatnot, and yet she still protected her. You know, she tried to give the doctor a warning, but when he didn't listen, she still went back into protective mode of being the big sister and protecting her sister. It was, it was just amazing to me, like, I guess blood is thicker than water in this situation because... Even though she absolutely loved, was in love with the doctor, she still picked her sister over him. Let's see. Kimberly said, I thought Corday might have gotten angry and killed one of them too. Yeah, I was really hoping that would happen because that would have been a great plot twist to the story. But we didn't get that either way. The ending was just a letdown. Yeah, I'm going to get to that. No worries. Yeah, the doctor was ridiculous. I think the issues with the beauty colorism and look speaks a lot about society today. Agreed. Um, and Anna wrote down some notes on colorism that I'll look at in a second. I think he doesn't want a lot of me. So when they see a woman who is deemed the ultimate beauty, yeah. That's, it's like the, the trophy wife, right? It's everything that, that he would want. Um, yeah, as far as colorism, Corday was older. She was average looking, dark skinned. Can't get a man to give her the time of day. And then versus Ayula, and these are honest notes. She had some great notes in here. Um, she's younger, beautiful, light skinned. All men want her. Yeah. And she also was smart. Like, Ayula just, I didn't understand. Like, I really can't understand how the doctor fell for her because, like, even just, you know, she killed her boyfriend, like, last night. And the next day, she's ready to post on Snapchat or Instagram or whatever. Like, like nothing happened. And her sister's, like, keeps having to remind her, like, dude, you're supposed to be in mourning right now. You can't be posting pictures of you smiling and, and ha living your best life when you just murdered a dude and he's supposed to be missing. Like, you got to chill with that. Yeah, the doctor just thrived off the attraction. I think Corday picked her sister because she honestly cared and told him the truth. Yeah, that's true. She did try to warn him. So she's like, well, I tried to tell you you're going to be stupid. See you later. <laughs> best of luck. He turned on her, which is why she sided with her sister, who basically said men are superficial. He proved that to Corday. Yep. I think he does what a lot of men do when we see a woman who is deemed the ultimate beauty. She's heartless. Exactly. She was crazy. Yep. Absolutely. I just, I was baffled. Like, the fact that you need to be reminded, you just murdered somebody. You feel nothing. Like... And Anna asked a great question, like, would you categorize Ayula as a sociopath? She felt nothing. Like, she just, it is what it is. Can we go shopping? Can we go out to eat? Can we go on this date? Let me, it's like one man's missing and she's bringing another one through the door. That was crazy to me.
But yeah, I mean, it, it's, you know, it, colorism showed up a lot in this book, especially between the two sisters. I almost want to get a visual of the parents. Um, did they talk about their mom and what she looked like? Because she seemed to side with Ayula a lot and protect her as well. So I'm just wondering if the mother looked like her. Even if she didn't, she still looked at her like the prize of the family. Yep, narcissistic sociopath. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Um, it's funny because I just, I actually kind of tweeted about this yesterday on my personal page about um, dealing with narcissists and people who just cannot take no for an answer. And I think that's, I think Ayula is exactly that. Um, narcissists have a hard time taking no for an answer and when Ayula didn't get her way, it would result in a murder. And I think, you know, someone asked me, what do you mean? They, they figured her out. Like they figured out who she truly was as a person. And once that started to unwind and they started to see the truth about her, she didn't like that. She was like, nobody's going to paint me out to be this horrible person. Or how dare you even consider trying to break up with me? So before you try to break up with me, I'm going to kill you. And that's kind of what what she ended up doing. Um, but yeah, I, it's funny because I literally just tweeted that. Didn't even think of um, Ayula being a narcissist until you just wrote that essence. Um, exactly. Her MO was discovered. That's when she went for the kill. Exactly. Yep. She was like, I'm going to get to you before you get to me. You're not going to pay me out to be this horrible person. Um, everybody looks at me like the HBIC, and I'm going to continue to, to, you know, keep that title. So, yeah. She, yeah, she definitely had some issues going on there. So I want to talk a little bit about the ending. So for me, I mean, I kept seeing y'all because I try to read the books towards the end of the month. So they're a little bit fresher in my mind. But, you know, um, when we come to these chats and I kept seeing y'all comment on there how you were like, <laughs> you hated the ending. And so I didn't know what to expect. I'm like, OK, so what's going to happen? For me, I absolutely hated the way it ended. Because it had left me with just so many questions. And I think, who was it? It was Keela. Keela who typed, she's not on here right now, but she basically reached out to the author. Because I'm like, okay, well, maybe there's going to be a part two of this book. And that's why she left it at that. So when she finishes writing the second book, we'll get some clarity. We'll get some answers. But the author actually wrote to her, wrote back to her and told her, she even sent the screenshot and everything, that there will not be a second book. There will not be a sequel to this. So how it ended is just how it ended. Um, so yeah, she's in her room. The, the housemaid or whatever tells her to come downstairs. She walks downstairs and there's another dude in the living room. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, who is this dude? First of all, like... Is it a cop? Has someone caught on to what they're doing? Is it, um, you know, I, I just, I wanted to know who that was. Is it another prospect that Ayula is bringing home? There's so many questions in my mind. So, hang on, let me catch. The author left the door open for another book, but she said, she told us that she's not writing another one. She, she definitely left the door open, but she said on, as of right now, she's not writing another one. Yeah, no, no, I was upset with the ending because I wanted Corday to move forward with the patient. Yeah. Yeah, and I need to talk about that. Thank you for bringing that up because I do need to circle back to him. Nope, no part two, guys. Number five, I rarely get offended, but dare I say I was offended. <laughs> like, damn, how dare you end this book like this? The book was very entertaining, but 
it was such a letdown. So man, what so many what ifs, what happened for everyone, blah, blah, blah. And yes, who the hell is this dude? So that's what I'm thinking. I'm like, it could have been a cop that was in their living room. It could have been another prospect that Ayula's bringing home. I don't know. Like, it just left me with so many questions that I didn't know where to go with this. Well, I hope if a movie does come out, does she already have, did, are they already negotiating that? It's the next one she'll murder. <laughs> that was the reason for the title. That's what I took from it anyway. Yeah, I don't know. I, I felt like it could have went so many different ways. She was going to continue to protect her. Hi, Selena. Yes. So I actually skipped a question. Um, and I do want to talk about that. So let's talk about... Where is it? Uh-oh, I'm missing his name. Um, look at this. I didn't cut out. Hang on, guys. I got to find it in my notes. So Mr. Mutar, I skipped over that and that was actually a very important piece of all of this. Hold on, let me read your comments and I'll come back to him. I can't see a movie out of this, maybe on TV, but not an actual movie. Yeah, I'm not sure. It's kind of quick, so I don't know, I don't know. The reason for ch the chapter five title I meant. The chapter title I meant number five. It was optioned before the book was done. Wow. Yes, Mutar, the patient in the coma. So I found that very interesting. I was, you know, in shock, of course. Dun, 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 plot twist. He can hear everything you're saying. Even though he's in a coma, you're revealing all of the stuff. You're confiding in him. You're spilling it, thinking that this dude is just going to wake up and not know anything of that was said. And he remembers everything. She tries to play it off like it's a dream. But he's like, oh, no, 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 no. This, this is the real deal. But I thought it was cool and I loved his character because I felt like he genuinely was the only person that was looking out for Corday, that cared for Corday in a way that showed interest in her. He was the only one, because her parents definitely didn't do it, I felt like he was the only protector um, that she had. And I really liked his character, even though at first I was like, oh, snap, he's about to like go to the police and tell on her. But he held that secret in. He held everything in. And, you know, I don't know. I, I liked him because I felt like he was the only person that like she could vent to and that had her back because essentially nobody else cared about her in that way. Exactly. Like the father she should have had. Yep. He was a protector. I was like, even though he knew this huge secret, it was like he saw the value in her and what she did for him as a patient and stuff like that. And so he he continued to, to be this protector of her. And I love that because that was something that she was lacking. Um, yeah. Uh, probably if I had to pick a favorite character, it actually might be him now that I'm um, thinking about it. I know I asked that question earlier, but it probably would be him. Agreed. Mutar definitely cared for her. I think he wanted her to disclose the truth on her own terms. Yeah. He recognized the weight the secrets were having on her. Exactly. And she definitely needed that outlet and he was able to be that for her. I knew he was going to come out of it. Yeah. I liked him too. He really cared for her. Yeah. I thought that, I thought that he was an important piece of the story. How dare I forget about him? Um, that definitely helped her her through it. Yep. Yeah. So, um, how did, what did you guys think of the, the pace of the story? Did you enjoy how it went? The pace of the story? Did you enjoy like the chapter titles and how it kind of bounced around to past things and I kind of liked it the way that the the chapters were named and then it was kind of like oh okay this makes sense why this is labeled number five or this makes sense why it's labeled instagram or um you know there was a couple of ones i think with the dad friend they had all different ice cream 
Um, but I, I actually appreciated the chapter titles because it was, they made sense. Even though they bounced around, some of them went back in time. Um, <laughs> Man Eater, that was an interesting one. But uh, yeah, I, I thought it was cute the way it bounced around. I definitely, it was an easy, um, fast paced read. Very easy pace, very easy read, I agree. Yeah, Kim, you cracked me up the other day because she was like, um, is this book really over? She's like, was that it? Should I have finished it? She's like, I just started today and I'm finished already. <laughs> Should I have finished it? I'm like, yeah, it's a, it's a quick read. I know for me, it was like six hours in audio. I think I finished it in a day or two days or something like that in, during my commute. It was easy to follow on audio. Yeah, I actually really love the audio book. Um, super easy to follow. I loved the being able to hear the pronunciations of the names and, and the characters. Initially thought I was going to be like the chapters in Monday's Not Coming. That's another one I need to read. It's sitting on my shelf, just collecting dust. They made sense and although they bounced, I didn't have to reread. Yeah, extremely short chapters. Yeah, some of them were like literally a page or two, if that. Super short chapters, which I think is what kept me so engrossed in the book was the fact that it was like on to the next switch scenes. Everything happens kind of quickly. Yeah, it was a very quick read. I listened to the audio. Yeah, I'm struggling to read lately, y'all. Most of my books that I've been doing lately, even though I have the physical copies of them, i am actually been doing a lot of audio lately. I just, y'all, I'm trying to keep up with life these days, man. Between, you know, book girl magic and, you know, being a single mom and kids and sports, it's hard for me to keep up and work. Working 10 hour days, I, something has to give. So I have to do a lot of audiobooks lately. Yes to Monday's Not Coming, read that, read that in the same day too. Wow. That's a pretty thick book though too, isn't it? Yeah, it's been audio for me all year. Like I was trying, I'm reading, reading An Unkindness of Ghost. I probably got like 10% in and I'm on spring break this week and I'm like, I have zero motivation to read this book. So I actually um, went to Libro FM, um, who I have a partnership in that book actually happened to be an audio book. So I, I chose that as my audio book for the month of April. So I'm getting through it now, but I just have no motivation to actually physically pick up a book and read it. I'm struggling. I can listen to it all day, but yeah. I need to slow down. I think I have too many books on my plate. Like I think I need to just back the number down of books that I want to read and go back to like either two, probably no more than three, but there's just so many like book clubs and, and books that I'm trying to keep up with that I'm just like, I'm struggling and I need to go grab another book. Hold on. So I'm offended. The writer thinks it's okay to just leave us hanging. Is it me or did she just get lazy at the end? Well, y'all go ahead and answer that question. I want to go grab something really quick, so I'm about to disappear for two seconds. All right, I'm back. <clears throat> Had to grab a book that I forgot about. I still love to hold a book in my hands, and a lot of people say that. Um... I, yeah, I usually try to do either an ebook because with an ebook, I can read it from the e-reader. I can read it on my desktop computer. Um, there's just, or my phone if I'm on the go. So I tend to like ebooks simply for that reason, just because I can have it in multiple places and no matter where I am on the go, I can always read it. But I've been reading, wait, I'm proud of myself because I used to just be a, an e-reader girl all the way. Um, so I'm proud of myself. I'm actually reading more physical books than I ever have. Let's see, I still love to hold a book in my hands. I usually stick to biographies for audiobooks, but I need help, laugh out loud, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, same here. And especially, yeah, if it's, or if it's a topic that, if it's nonfiction and it's really heavy, audiobooks help me get through that. Like, 
um, I'm kind of paused, but they were her property. Is a book that I'm doing audiobook, um, in audiobook format, and it's about white women and the roles that they played um, during slavery. So it's actually very interesting because you know we like to pretend that they didn't have much of a role, or it's kind of swept under the rug, and they make white men look like the ones that have all the power. But this book really talks about how the women really had the power and what they did um, back in the day. So it's a very interesting read. Um, audiobooks are life. Don't overwhelm yourself. It should be refreshing, enjoyable, and not a struggle. Exactly. And I started off the year saying that. So while I had four books on my list, I think only three will get read this month. Um, yeah, I mean, my goal is to read 24. I've already read 12 this year. So I think I'm just going to have to like chill out with some of the books that I had on my list. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to. So we shall see. I need a break and I'm traveling a lot this month. Like tomorrow I'm leaving for Charlotte first thing in the morning and I go to Canada at the end of the month. So yeah, reading is not going to be priority. Yes. Take it a book at a time. Yep. I think honestly, I need to just stop doing, um, to be read list for the month because it does get overwhelming and I've got way too much on my plate. Like you know, a year ago, yeah, I definitely had time to read four books, maybe more a month. But now with my schedule of, you know, if you guys haven't subscribed, um, I just launched a newsletter April 1st. So now I've got that on my plate. I am trying to hopefully by the summer figure out this whole clothing line so that you guys can have some of this book girl magic apparel and, and stuff too. So I've got that on my plate. Um, you guys have heard me talk about retreats. I've got that on my plate. I actually had a woman reach out to me earlier this week about she's got a villa in Jamaica. So um, I'm going to talk with her not this week, but next week when I go back to work and stuff like that. And I'm back on my regular schedule because I'm on spring break right now um, with the kiddos. So that's another thing that we can look forward to. Um, so I've just got a lot going on right now. All that to say. I never tried audio, but I will give it a try. Definitely, if you try um, a, a biography, would probably be the best way to go. Like, Becoming was a great one for me to do an audio format. Um, they actually just bring stories to life. I'm going to do Queenie as well in audiobook format. Um, Scribed is a great platform. I know I should be pushing, pushing Libro FM because I have a partnership with them. Um, but Scribed is a great one if you're unlimited audiobooks for like $8.99. It's kind of like the Netflix of audiobooks. Um, Libro FM, I have a partnership with. So if you're doing audiobook, I mean, Audible, it's basically the same thing, $14.99 for one credit. But if you use my promo code, and I can get that to anybody who wants it, if you use my promo code, you get three audiobooks for the price of one. So that's another option. Um, and they actually have a great selection of books. Read at night why I favor e-readers. Yeah, I try to read at night, but when you work 10 hour days and you know you get home at six o'clock and you gotta put kids to bed and feed them and go to practice by you know between six and eight, it, it's by the time I get home and I've been up since 4 a.m., reading at night doesn't doesn't really happen. So, um, but yeah, if the, you guys have your strategies, share them with me. That probably works best for y'all. I think I'm more of a morning reader. Hardcover preferably, a book is always in my bag, wallet, and a book. Oh, what's the name of that book again? It's called They Were Her Property. Um, let me, I don't know. Let me see if I can grab it for you. Hang on. I feel like I should have brought her at my collection, but they call it's called They Were Her Pre Property um, by Stephanie E. Jones Rogers. It's a uh, white women as slave owners in the American South. So that's currently one, one of the audio books that I'm listening to right now. Um, getting into small physical pocketbooks. What is that? No more TBR is helpful. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to get rid of it. But it also helps with me posting to YouTube and stuff like that. Yes, I've subscribed. Yeah, if you guys have, uh, have not subscribed... Um, go to bookgirlmagic.com forward slash newsletter. You'll see the newsletter for the month of April and also subscribe to the list because like today I sent out a reminder that our book chat was happening tonight. 
Um, I'm not going to spam you guys with emails, but like next week I'll have a special announcement, which I'm going to tell you guys, sorry, I'm out of breath, um, about in a few seconds. Um, but just like little announcements, updates, monthly newsletter. And then eventually when I start launching stuff like retreats and clothing lines and things like that, that will go out via newsletter and stuff like that. So if you guys haven't, you should subscribe. Yes, I need an assistant, more like an intern because I can't afford an assistant right now. Did you say retreat? Yes, please. Yes, I want to start doing annual retreats for Book Girl Magic. So um, if it doesn't happen by the end of this year, we will definitely do it in the first quarter of next year. I'm just trying to map out all the details. But yes, I would love for us to get together and at least once a year hang out. Yeah, I need an intern. I need to put Tatum and Tenley to work. Did I miss the entire discussion? Yes, ma'am. But hey, if you go over to Instagram in like nine minutes, we're about to go live. Anna is going to come on with me and we're going to talk. We're going to tag team together and do this all over again. So if you've missed the discussion here, we will be going live in nine minutes over on Instagram. Mini books. Yes, Lulu. <laughs> so before I wrap this up, I just want to tell you guys a little bit. Um, talk about next month. So you guys know the April book of the month is Queenie by Candace Cardi Williams. So that will be our primary book, but, um, I'm actually having author Jane Allen. And if you haven't seen her book, Black Girls Must Die Exhausted, a novel for grownups, um, she is actually going to come live with me. Uh, I think I want to say May the 7th, whatever that first Tuesday is in May, She's going to come on live with me. We're, excuse me, she's currently reading Queenie as well. So we're going to do a double whammy and we're going to discuss both of these books. So if you have time to fit this one in, I'd highly recommend it because Jane is going to come on with us and talk about her book. And um, yeah, we're going to, I'm excited to have our first author come on live with us and actually discuss. So if you have time, squeeze this one in so we'll have a little q a you guys can ask her anything and she's just going to come on here live with me on both facebook and instagram actually we're going to do it at the same time next week it, along with queenie um because she's reading that as well so i think that's going to be super cool to have that and i'm looking up the date now for y'all blah 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 okay Yes, May 7th, which is a Tuesday at 8 p.m. So Jane Allen will come on live with us and we'll be able to discuss both books with her. I'm super excited for that. Yep, not going to get burnt out. So I'm going to take y'all's advice. Thank you for that. Read less because I've just got so much more that I want to pour into the book club and so much more that I need to focus on. I've been dragging my feet on this whole clothing thing. And um, the problem is, is finding a drop shipper that's going to do it right because I want to make sure that if I put out a product, it's going to be 110% stuff that I would wear and, and purchase myself. That's not going to feel cheap, look cheap, peel like, you know, because a lot of my stuff has the gold foil on there. I just want it done right. So I'm, I'm not going to rush to put out something that's just going to be half-assed. I want to do it right for y'all. So uh, Jamie said, congrats on 8K. Thank you. Just hit 8K on Instagram. So I'm super excited for that. Really want to get to 10. I hope to get to 10 by the end of the summer. Fingers crossed. Um, just so I can have that swiped up option. And, you know, when I post blogs and links and stuff like that, people can just like swipe up and read it right from there. That would be awesome. No need to apologize. So excited for that. Yay. Exactly. Yep. So I've got a lot in store for you guys. I'm super excited for what Book Girl Magic has in store. It is officially a business and an LLC. I did lock that down within the past month. So, um... I am super excited about the things to come to us. I definitely want us to, um, you know, take this book club to the max. Yeah, that swipe up option is going to be game changing. Like to be able to post the newsletter and be like, hey, swipe up to subscribe and not have people go to my bio and click on links and stuff like that. It's going to be life changing for me to have that. So I just like I'm like, fingers crossed, please, let's just get to 10K. Um, but I'm excited that I've done that in such a short time. So really excited. So thank y'all so much for joining us. Super excited um, about next month and the two books that we have. So I definitely at least am going to be reading two books this coming month. Um, 
yeah, I might have to, I might have to push a couple of other books, but I think you're all right. I think I'm going with these two and finishing up the ones that I have on my plate right now. You know, the other problem is, is like, I have to continue to put up content on IG. So the more I read, the more content I have to post too, but I don't care. I think I'm just going to have to slow it down a little bit, at least for this month and maybe next month I'll feel refreshed. So Thank you ladies so much for coming on and chatting with us tonight. Um, love to hear your thoughts and opinions on this book. And we, Anna and I are gonna go, we've got five minutes, so we're gonna go head over to IG. So if you feel like chatting about this with a whole new group of people, feel free to pop on and join our chat. And I love you guys bunches and we'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs>